Hello, everyone, and welcome to Carleton University's virtual March open house. Um, so today we are at the session for Earth Sciences, um, Environmental Sciences, and all the all the in betweens as well. Um, so I just want to give a quick land acknowledgement uh, for the land that we all lo are located on. Of course, we're not there in person, but we do want to give a land acknowledgement for the land that Carleton is located on, which is the traditional and unceded territories of the Algonquin Nation. Um, so that is. Um, my role for today, and I am basically just running the session, helping everyone out, um, and I'll pretty much hand the mic over to our speakers now. Hello, everybody. Uh, so, Tatiana, is my screen being shared? Yes, it is. All right. Thank you very much. I'd like to welcome you all to our session that is jointly hosted by Earth Sciences. I'm Sharon Carr, Environmental Sciences interdisciplinary science and practice. So the co-hosts are Dr. Sean Landsman and, doctors, and Dr. Stephen Cook. Steve is going to be moderating your questions as they come in and he's able to uh, field questions in all the topics we're gonna cover today. I'm going to give a brief presentation about the Department of Earth Sciences and then I'm turning over the um, floor to Sean, who's going to give a presentation about environmental sciences, interdisciplinary science and practice. We're saving time at the end for questions. There would be time for a couple of quick questions at the end of my presentation. So I'm just going to get started now and tell you all about the Department of Earth Sciences. So I'm a full professor in the department. I study how mountains form. I'm a field geologist. I spend as much time as I can out in the wilds looking at rocks, but I also have a very high-tech lab. So this is uh, pretty much modus operandi for uh, geoscientists. We're very hands-on or very theoretical, and we have the opportunity to do field work, lab work, computer modeling. So we have uh, lots of different experiences that we can offer the students. We have a very strong set of core values in the department. Our main focus is on students. We place students at the center of our learning and also at the center of our research programs. Students get opportunities to use our fancy instruments in the classes as they're progressing through the programs. We try and engage them in summer research projects. And uh, there's a capstone fourth year research project. We get to know our students. Uh, we're a small department. And uh, the students are, are central to uh, what we believe is uh, really our mandate here in the university. Our second core value is excellence in teaching and research. And our third is leadership in public outreach. We play a very important role in training teachers, homeschool teachers, and in preserving geoheritage in the Ottawa Gatineau area and presenting it to the general public. Our programs reflect the high significance of earth sciences in society, the economy, and the environment. We have scientific depth to offer our students significant expertise in the form of world-class scientists and technical staff. And we do have very well-equipped teaching labs, for example, computers, microscopes available to all the students. And we have resources to help students get involved in research, particularly in their fourth year, and to support field trips. Our programs have interdisciplinary breadth, we offer programs with other science units, including environmental science and other faculties, including geography, Northern Studies, the Sprott School of Business and the Department of Economics. In Canada, geoscientists like engineers are professionally registered and our programs uh, position students to uh, be able to become professional geoscientists of Ontario. So our programs are accredited in three streams, environmental, geophysics, and solid earth sciences. 
Earth science is really relevant to our local landscape, the national landscape, and the globe. The United Nations has put together a blueprint for peace and prosperity of people on the planet in terms of 17 sustainable development goals. And earth science has a critical role in seven of the 17 goals, including clean water, affordable energy, infrastructure, industry and innovation, sustainable cities, sustainable consumption and production, climate action and life in the ocean. Other roles of earth scientists include geohazards, agrogeology, geotourism, and geoeducation. And student geoscientists, as well as educators and researchers, professionals, policymakers, all have a role to play in helping achieve the sustainable development goals. The programs that we offer in the Department of Earth Science are the fourth year BSc honors. Generally, about half of our students are in this program. We also offer specializations or concentrations in finance and resource valuation, resource economics. These are programs that we offer in conjunction with the Sprott School of Business and the Department of Economics. Uh, those kinds of programs are for entrepreneurial minded students or students that want to um, go into the finance side of things. Vertebrate paleontology and paleoecology is one of the largest in North America. And about half our students right now are in geophysics. We also have combined programs with physical geography, biology and chemistry. And for people that aren't interested in the honors program, we have a four year and a three year program. Many of our earth science students take a minor, for example, in business or geomatics. And students in another program may take a minor in earth sciences. The advantages to our program compared to other universities, we have very strong endowments which, which support scholarships for students and direct costs of research for student projects, sub subsidies for field trips, and um, there's a slush fund so that any group of students can um, ask for funding for any student activities. We have a deep and wide connection to help get summer jobs for students and provide research opportunities. And there is a wide range of opportunities for postgraduate employment. Many of our uh, honor students go on to graduate school. We have a really wonderful bursary which helps us support a fourth year capstone field trip to an international or national location. And here are some pictures from previous trips in the Swiss Alps, in Morocco, and in New Zealand. I mentioned early in the presentation that we have high tech research. And here's an example in the top left picture of our mass spectrometer. It's a million dollar machine that uh, measures isotope ratios. We have a number of different uh, imaging systems for three-dimensional modeling. And all of our teaching labs have microscopes and computers in them. I mentioned earlier GeoHeritage is important to our department. We pay, play a key role in helping to uh, pr bring uh, geological sites around Ottawa to the general public. We have an annual GeoHeritage Day every fall. And we have about 30 volunteers and we partner with the GeoHeritage Society. And it's advertised in the papers and uh, volunteering within the university environment is a great way to get experience. It goes on a co-curricular record and it's a fun way to meet people. So I'd like to just wrap up by saying that we have small class sizes, very hands-on labs, and the opportunities to use research instruments and computers, as well as get out into the field. Our students have a number of societies and are very active and there's funding to support their activities, there's scholarship opportunities and job opportunities. 
I am not going to go into this typical course map, but if anyone has any specific questions at the end in the question period, then I can basically go through the flow of what a four-year program would look like. So thank you for your attention. I think there's time for any uh, quick questions, and we'll move on um, after that to Sean's presentation. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. OK, great. Thanks, Sharon. Any any quick questions or um, <clears throat> we can we can also field questions on all three of the programs, too, at the end. I think we'll have time uh, time for that as well. So if some of you would like to gather your thoughts a little bit and maybe jot some notes down, um, feel free to ask some questions uh, toward the end of this session as well. OK. If I don't see any questions in the chat, then I'll go ahead and try and get my screen here. All right. Let's see if this works. All right. Can everyone see that? Let me just grab this up. Can everyone see that? Maybe Sharon can confirm there. Yes, very okay, good. Thank great. you. Okay, great. All right. Okay, well, um, welcome everybody. I, I would like to uh, to spend a bit of time now talking about our environmental science and interdisciplinary science and practice programs. Uh, my name is Dr. Sean Landsman. I'm a inst uh, full time instructor <clears throat> in the uh, interdisciplinary science and, and practice program. Uh, also cross appointed uh, to biology as well. But my main home is uh, is ISAP. Now these two programs. Um, just sort of for your understanding, are, are part of what's called the Institute of Environmental and Interdisciplinary Science. So the Institute is, is our unit, and then we've got these two programs um, within it. Um, so environmental science is one of the oldest such programs in all of Canada. It's been running for about 30 years now. So very well-established program. Um, and again, one of the uh, first of its kind here in Canada. Um, uh, the Inter Interdisciplinary Science and Practice Program, which I'll just shorten uh, because it's a bit of a mouthful, um, to say ISAP, okay? Um, ISAP is a, is a pretty new program. Um, it was, uh, we began it in, in 2019, um, but it was built upon our previous integrated science program. So we have a track record of, of delivering similar uh, types of programs. Um, common themes for both the environmental science and, and ISAP programs. Um, uh, Dr. Carr mentioned the sustainable development goals and, and for sure uh, the environmental science and ISAP programs uh, touch on uh, a number of different sustainable development goals. Both programs really emphasize applied science. Um, in other words, science that can be applied to solve real world problems or, or address, address key issues facing society uh, today. So, you know, we might tackle um, issues that might relate to food security, climate resiliency, uh, environmental protections, and even, you know, touching on health, uh, health and well-being, particularly as, as they relate uh, to environmental um, issues. Um, so, yeah, so definitely applied science is, is kind of a common theme um, for both programs. Another common theme uh, is the interdisciplinary nature uh, of both programs. And really, um, where this comes into play is recognizing that we really need to draw upon diverse knowledge to solve uh, today's problems. We really can't approach today's wicked problems from just a single perspective, but we need to draw upon multiple forms of knowledge to address uh, these issues. And, and this knowledge could look like um, drawing from indigenous knowledge, um, it can be knowledge that's based in other scientific disciplines um, and other types of stakeholder knowledge as well. But um, recognizing that multiple perspectives is really key uh, to, to solve some of these really difficult, complex problems. Um, just to give you just kind of a brief overview of, of these two programs. Um, for, so for environmental science, we offer an honors program. and. Uh, and, a, and a general program. The only difference there really is, is the amount of coursework uh, and, and the number of credits. 
Um, we have different concentrations that you can you can um, you can take uh, or declare for environmental science. Uh, you can see some of those there. Um, you can also minor in a number of uh, different fields, and there's also a co-op education option, um, which is uh, which is pretty popular with our, our students. And uh, I, I mean, it it just it gets you such excellent experience that um, uh, that that's hard to come by uh, otherwise. Um, and so these are some of the recent placements that our, our students have, have been in for, for the environmental science program. Uh, we've had students working with the National Capital Commission, Fisheries and Oceans Canada, uh, Environment Canada, Canada, and consulting firms uh, as well. Um, like the environmental science program, ISAP also has an honors in general program. Um, students must select one minor in the faculty of science for ISAP. Um, there's a list there. Um, one thing that we, we do encourage our students uh, to pursue is actually a second minor outside of the faculty of science. So in another faculty, faculty of public affairs, some other faculty. Um, so as an example, we, we currently have one student in ISAP. Uh, she's double minoring um, in biology and, uh, and business, actually. But we also have students that are interested in uh, minoring in something like communications and, and media studies uh, as well. Um, we also have a co-op education option. So, so ISAP is also part of the co-op program. Okay, so why choose environmental science or, or ISAP here at Carleton? I think one of the things that, that, that um, really all three of these programs, including earth science, um, it, we have small class sizes and really dedicated faculty. Um, that are strongly committed to teaching uh, and mentoring. Um, a lot of our, our professors take on students for directed studies courses. Um, I actually took on a earth science uh, student last semester um, uh, for a directed studies course that was related more to science communication uh, and geoscience communication in particular. Um, we regularly take on students for, for honors projects uh, as well. Um, and so you can see here, for example, that's uh, Dr. Cook, who's in the background answering questions, working with his students in the field. Uh, there I am uh, before the COVID long hair, as well as one of our, our ISAP, um, other ISAP professors, Dr. Vivian Nguyen, uh, with our students. Uh, and we're at, in front of the Public Health Agency of Canada for, for one of our courses. We also have lots of interaction with, with diverse faculty. So again, there's Vivian Nguyen on, on the right there. She's one of our ISAP professors and an, another ISAP professor is uh, uh, Rachel Buxton. Uh, she's one of our newest hires uh, with expertise in data science. We've got Joe Bennett um, in the environmental science program and, and students can, can interact with, with faculty even outside um, of, uh, of our program. So that's uh, the, the, the fairly famous uh, Mike Runtz, uh, who's a, a famous natural uh, historian uh, here in Ontario. We have award-winning faculty. Um, so Dr. Cook uh, is, is one of the most prolific uh, scientists in the, in the fishery science field, um, one of the most awarded as well. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Rich uh, Amos, and uh, he's receiving, a, he's in the environmental science program, also at Earth Sciences. Uh, and uh, he's receiving the governor. Um, uh, he's receiving an award from the governor, former governor of general, governor general of Canada, Dr. David Johnston. Um, and we also have uh, really talented students as well. So a lot of our students make the make the dean's list, uh, and some of our students produce really high quality research. Um, so this is on the left here. That's Sophia Jane uh, Schleppler. Um, and uh, she she did uh, research with uh, with snapping turtles. That's a really big one there. Um, and she won the Governor General's Medal, um, and then went on to complete her PhD at, at James Cook University uh, in Australia. So um, again, we 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 uh, we help train some very talented uh, students. Uh, we also have a, a a resource room that's exclusive to environmental science and uh, and ISAP students as well. You can ignore the integrated science um, uh, text on that placard. This is a bit of an old photo, but uh, but we have this we have this resource room which 
um, in, in kind of in pre-COVID times was, was packed with students all the time studying to the wee hours of the morning or, uh, you know, if I had to get there early, uh, get to my office early in the day, uh, there were students, you know, already there by 7 a.m. Uh, working together. Lots of socialization, it's a place to have some fun, network uh, with your peers, uh, that kind of thing. Um, we also have a very tight knit and engaged uh, student body in, in environmental science um, uh, as part of the Environmental Science Student Association. Uh, to me, it, it, it strikes me as one of the more engaged student societies uh, here on campus. That's a really fantastic way of building community. Um, we're also just starting one uh, for, for our ISAP students as well. So that one is just getting started. And I, I can't stress enough the importance of uh, what, what Carlton calls the, the capital advantage. Um, the capital advantage provides opportunities for students that um, students at other universities may not have access to. Um, just because so many like government uh, departments and branches are kind of headquartered here in Ottawa, lots of NGOs are headquartered here in Ottawa to be close to all the political action. Um, we have lots of museums here. Um, we have just really great connections right at our fingertips. And, and so a lot of the, the staff at these different departments or NGOs um, would also be uh, adjunct professors um, and, and collaborators with us. So you could potentially be co-supervised, for example, um, by, uh, by an adjunct professor in one of these institutions. So um, really can't stress enough how, how much of an advantage that is for our students. Uh, we also emphasize uh, place-based, hands-on, active, and experiential uh, learning. So you can see some examples uh, here on the right. We've got students out in the field. Um, that looks like it might actually be right behind Carleton uh, or, or close by. Uh, and then we've got students that are working together in small groups. This is actually a, a mock stakeholder engagement meeting in, uh, in one of my courses um, where they actually had to kind of represent different groups of people and kind of had a bit of a class debate. And so they're, they're all working together on, uh, on this meeting. We also have some very uh, unique course offerings. So for example, in environmental science, there's a third year field course that's focused on environmental management, uh, policy, and, and stewardship. Um, for ISAP students, um, we have actually a, th a new third year field course that's focused on science communication. This was developed um, just before uh, COVID. Um, so we haven't had a chance to actually deliver this yet, but um, as restrictions ease and, and um, uh, you know, things change, we're, we're, we're looking to, uh, to be able to, to host this in the near future. But this is a really um, unique course because it actually combines um, science students and journalism students. So it's, it's co-delivered. Um, I'm one of the teachers for it, as well as uh, uh, Sarah Everts in the, journalism, the School of Journalism. So a very unique course. Uh, we also have uh, opportunities, offer opportunities for students to take field courses um, in biology and earth science uh, ar around the globe. So you can see some students here. Looks like that's maybe in the boreal forest. And then we've got uh, we've got a student there that's um, taking some data in a quadrat uh, while scuba diving underwater um, somewhere in the ocean. I wish I was there that now. It's very it looks very idyllic. It's very uh, we've got lots of snow on my roof. You can see out here. Um, we also really emphasize um, teaching students how to communicate with diverse audiences. Um, I'd say this is one of the, 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 the best aspects um, of environmental science and uh, interdisciplinary science and practice. So we really take this to heart in trying to get students to develop strong communication skills. So as an example, I offer a course in ISAP, but although it's open to other uh, students within the Faculty of Science, um, where um, our students learn to communicate with many different audiences, um, from kids to policymakers, for example. Um, I've had students that have written science articles for kids. So this journal here, the Frontiers for Young Minds journal, um, they've written articles on the stress response, what happens after a volcanic eruption, uh, as well as dark matter. I've had students that have created websites to explain autism to neurotypical parents. Um, others have penned articles on the ethics on ethics and medicine uh, for the charlatan. Uh, others have made animated videos to explain things like anti-predator defense mechanisms and lizards and, and more. Uh, the students have done a wide range of things, but uh, all with the goal of trying to communicate complex science to 
um, to, to non-experts across a, 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 an array of audiences. Our assignments in our courses are, are real and timely and connect um, uh, and develop professional skills and, and connections. So for example, um, you saw a picture earlier with myself, uh, a few of our students and Dr. Vivian Nguyen um, in front of the Public Health, Agen Health Agency of Canada sign. Uh, they conducted exploratory analysis to determine uh, if employees had the tools and training to actually be innovative in their jobs. And so this had like a very direct uh, application to some issues that uh, uh, the Public Health Agency of Canada was experiencing. So this is wonderful um, material for your resume. Uh, this year, Dr. Vivian Nguyen is, is uh, working with students on the Change Maker Challenge uh, in that, that same uh, particular course. So um, some very, uh, very important work that's going on within our classes. And there's the opportunity to do publication quality research for undergraduate, um, for the undergraduate thesis as well. So it's re really amazing. Um, we also want to share findings with our peers and, and stakeholders. Um, so there's opportunities to do that. Um, our environmental science students can secure employment in a wide range of, of fields, uh, as well as go on to graduate school. And so here's some of those there. Um, and our ISAP students are very well prepared and will be very well prepared for employment. Um, and so we're excited to see where those students uh, end up here in the future. But these are some of the, the careers that, uh, that students can potentially um, uh, go into. And just a note on, on COVID-19, this has been a bit of a disruption, but you know, we're, all, um, we're all really seeking to, uh, to move past this and uh, we're all developing a pedagogy of care and, um, and, and really trying to put student needs uh, first and foremost. So very much looking forward to getting back in, in person in the fall. Uh, some classes are being held online, some are a hybrid approach, um, but, uh, um, but, but definitely have our student safety uh, uh, at the forefront. If you have any questions, please feel free to email Dr. Cook uh, or myself as well. And I think we can go to questions now. Let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen. All right. So feel free to uh, drop any questions in the chat um, for both, yeah, for both Sharon uh, and myself. This is Steve, and so maybe I'll start a question. Just I'll, I'll ask a question of both of you just to get things uh, things going. So, um, you know, can you tell me uh, what a student might expect in first year? What does first year look like in earth sciences? And then, Sean, can you tell us what what first year might look like for for the other two programs? So, Sharon. So, in first year, we try and get the uh, earth science students. Uh, to meet each other so that uh, they know who their cohort is going to be and they can make friends more easily and break the ice. We usually have a department barbecue and we make sure everybody gets out to that. It's at lunchtime during the weekday. In terms of the academic side of things, there is a fall full term uh, lecture course with a three hour lab and then a second earth science course in the winter, a lecture in a three hour lab. And uh, the other part of the program is, uh, I'm just gonna bring up my PowerPoint showing the map of the courses here. So this is the first year fall term on the left, the vertical column right here. So there's exploring planet Earth in the fall, the Earth system through time in the winter, and the rest of the courses are taken up with science required courses, chemistry, physics, and one free elective. Um, we do engage the students in first year right into the department culture. We get them out to Geo Heritage Day as volunteers. We get students helping with our outreach program in the schools and when students come onto campus from the schools. And we try and help uh, fourth year and third year students get hooked up with them 
to help mentor them. There's a, a homework hour that's run by the uh, senior students. And uh, so I'd, I'd say that it's pretty intensive in terms of the academic side, but there's lots of support and lots of collegiality. Great, thanks, Sharon. Um, yeah, I'll probably put up the course maps for, for both programs as well for environmental science and, and ISAP. But, you know, to kind of echo what, what Sharon said there, one of the things that's really important for that first year is making sure the transition for students is as smooth as possible, going from that kind of high school learning environment into university learning can can be a, can be a little bit challenging, but um, but our programs, Earth Science included, you know, are small enough that we can provide good support for our students, and you know we're actively trying to do that, especially in that first year. And so, for example. Um, in environmental science, uh, you have uh, actually. I'll pull up the. I'll pull this up here. Let me share the screen, and we'll share this. Um, so, environmental science, you can you can see that there's a, a science seminar in the fall. You've got a math course as well, first year biology course, uh, chemistry, first year chemistry, and a first first year earth sciences course. Um, you know, a lot of these these courses are, of course, they're foundational, but, you know, specifically the environmental science seminar course is really, you know, getting you kind of uh, up to speed on how science is, is conducted at the at the university level. So it's kind of getting you used to um, science writing uh, in, you know, at, at a university level. Um, you know, you'll be hearing different presentations from from faculty members on their research. Um, you can see in the winter, you'll have the opportunity to take an elective course. Um, there's also an intro to statistics course, another first year biology course, chem, uh, and uh, introductory, introductory course to physical geography. So this is for environmental science students. So you're, you're getting like a good foundation uh, that you can then build upon in your second, third, and, and fourth year courses. Um, Sean, I'm going to interrupt for a yeah. second. Can you... Oh, uh, go to your screen, our speaker, sorry, the slide view to make the slide a bit bigger. How's there we that? go. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So again, um, here you can, you can see the course map and, and Steve may be able to drop uh, a link to this, uh, to this, the PDF of this course map in the chat, uh, if you can, if you can find that. Um, for ISAP, it would look pretty similar for for ISAP uh, in terms of having these introductory courses, but just by the very nature of ISAP being a, a pretty interdisciplinary uh, program, um, it, it, there are some key differences. So you can see, for example, uh, there's first year math, which is similar, but there's also then an introductory coding course that students take uh, during during the winter. Um, you have like a, a, a kind of a subject of a, a field of specialization that you want to go into. And so you, you take one course in that field uh, in the fall um, and uh, actually two of those and then uh, two in the winter and then an, an elective course. Um, but you follow the, the same group of students is in ISAP 1001 as are in uh, ISAP 1002. So I teach ISAP 1002, and by the time I get those students, you know, they all know each other. Um, and so it, it's super fun for me as, as a prof um, because the students have already built a nice rapport with each other. So there's lots of like side jokes and, and things like that that just kind of keeps the atmosphere really light, but it, but it helps, you know, it helps move the course forward and it helps open up discussion. So um, so it's really, you know, kind of emphasis on getting students grounded uh, in university academics um, and, you know, helping ease that transition and, and helping students build a community within their programs. Thanks I'd so like to add, yeah. I'd Go like to add something really exciting that happens at the end of first year. So academically excellent students are invited by the dean at the end of first year to apply for a summer internship. So the dean supplies a large percentage of summer salary. The student partners with a faculty member and writes a research proposal. And if they're successful, their summer is completely funded. 
So there's summer work in a Carleton research group. And this is something that has uh, really turned students on to a particular topic. They've ended up getting uh, jobs and research opportunities following from that throughout the rest of their program. And maybe the other two colleagues and co-hosts can say something about examples of, of some of these uh, Dean funded projects. Maybe I'll, I'll jump in just because I've been here a little bit longer than uh, than Sean and I've had a couple of DSRI students. So uh, yeah, they, they get fully integrated into our team. Normally we, you know, it's quite usual for students in fourth year to be working on their thesis and working alongside grad students. What's unique is for first year students to start getting those experiences right off the bat. And uh, uh, often those students end up getting rehired year after year after year because they're, uh, um, they're so valuable, uh, have uh, incredible resources. And I, I think, as I said in the chat, I think we're giving away about 40 of these a year now. That's across the Faculty of Science, but uh, our, our units uh, are Science, environmental science, and ISAP do uh, do quite well in that that competition. I'm going to take us to. Uh, uh oh. Edmund was wondering what some of those lab or assignments might look like that take place outside of the classroom. So maybe Sharon. Yes. So uh, we like to get in a van or rent a bus and go look at rocks in the field. So in first year, we do have local field trips that are part of the lab component of the course. I see there's some questions in the chat. What do some lab assignments look like? So in first year, the in earth sciences, there could be uh, everything from learning how to identify rocks and minerals, which are like the alphabet for earth scientists. It's like learning the alphabet so you can speak the words and write the words. You have to learn the minerals and the rocks so that you can start thinking about the processes, how they formed and what happened to them. You might be doing some case study calculations, um, looking at uh, changes in the earth. Um, for example, um, when the ice shields retreated, the Earth uh, is floating um, in isostatic equilibrium. And as the 10,000 year old ice sheets retreated, the Earth is rebounding and it changes Earth's coastlines. So there might be some uh, work around trying to understand this concept and uh, looking at some data and doing some calculations. There's also geophysics side of things. So we look at how sound waves propagate through the earth. And we also do have environmental applications to uh, earth sciences. So there could be case studies. I know we have um, one of our instructors is working with uh, the hydrogeologist and they're actually going to start to do more extensive uh, surveys on campus of the, the groundwater. So one of the first year labs is to go out and uh, and sample the groundwater. Um, so I'll just uh, turn over the floor to Sean and Steve. Sure. Yeah, I'll let Steve talk about the environmental science uh, labs and and maybe some sample assignments. Um, but for for ISAP, you, you know, a lot of a lot of what we do in ISAP is pretty project based. Um, you know, again, we we want to give. So part of the name of our program is and practice. So part of the practice means. Um, you know, you'll get a lot of opportunities to practice communication, to practice writing, um, to practice other soft skill development, for example, like just, you know, making agendas for meetings and actually running meetings. And so we might be, students might be running meet meetings with community partners or, uh, you know, partners from allied agencies, like from, from some of the federal um, government branches and, and departments. Um, we have a, yeah, we have a lot of like term projects. So the project then gets scaffolded. So there's multiple checkpoints over the course of the semester to make sure, okay, checkpoint number one is this, number two is this. And so by the time the, the semester ends, um, you've been progressing and, and working, um, toward the finished project all semester. Um, we might have, um, opportunities to, 
you know, to present updates to your classmates. So there might be a presentation that you'd have to do, um, uh, you know, maybe critiquing uh, a scientific advancement or uh, that that's come out in the news and kind of critiquing how how the news is is talking about that. Um, yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of different things that that we expose our, our students to. So I think that's one of the, the things that makes um, uh, especially ISAP really interesting is that, that there's lots of different things uh, going on that the students get to work on. Yeah, that's great. And I think one of the themes that uh, that really helps describe what Carlton does, it's like the word engagement is a big part of that. And I remember a few years ago, Carlton ran a marketing campaign and it was called Anything But Textbook. And I think that really defines things. You know, uh, we, you know, textbooks are certainly important, but actually getting out and experiencing the world, place-based learning, experiential learning, that's why we're so passionate about field courses. And we want to get students Students. When when people say, oh, you know, you know, you know, tell me about a day in the classroom. Well, a good day in the classroom means we're actually not in the classroom. Uh, or if we are, we're we're doing something. We're working together. Uh, we're we're we have a physical, you know, something in our hand, you know, a rock or a mineral or uh, or a, a fish, uh, and we're we're learning by doing. Um, and that's something that, that we just really take seriously and, and, and try and ensure is built into all of the courses at Carleton. And that's somewhat unique um, at, at really big institutions that may happen in fourth year uh, at Carleton that starts in first year. Uh, we just we really value students and center them around everything that we do. So I noticed that Julie had a question a few minutes ago about typical class lecture hours. So in earth sciences, the lecture is two hours per week or three hours per week. And the lab is three hours per week. And depending on the professor and the material, the lectures could be distributed uh, in 50 minute blocks or they could be in a two hour block. So when I teach, I teach a two hour lecture it's called a lecture, but like Steve said, it is not a lecture. <laughs> and then a three hour lab. And the lecture has in-class activities and different modules. And it uh, allows us to have enough time to uh, learn some theory and then apply it and practice problems that are going to be coming up in the lab. And some people have more dense information that they need to impart. So for example, a geophysicist might think it's better just to do small doses. So there might be a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday lecture. And the lectures are during the daytime. And the labs are in the morning or the afternoon. In first year, there are some evening labs, but not very many. Most of them are in the, in the daytime. We always put a few evening labs on because we have professionals that are taking a general interest course, and they would like an evening lab. But the earth science students get first choice at their uh, lab sessions. Yeah, and Julie, I neglected to, to mention the hours um, for environmental science and ISAP. It's going to be similar to earth science. There's some people that, you know, value Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so three days a week for like an hour. Sometimes it's, you know, an hour and a half. Um, other times it might be, you know, up, upwards of like a couple of hours or something. Um, and so it, it just it just varies. And, and not every class necessarily goes the full time. Um, depending on on the the content, um, but uh, but yeah, so it, it just kind of varies. Yeah, some of our third and fourth year classes are actually in a block so that we can leave leave town. <laughs> so we have hydrogeology yeah. on Monday, mineral deposits on Tuesday, and structural geology on Wednesday, with a morning block of time for the lecture material and the afternoon for the lab. Yeah, a lot of my classes are about an hour and a half, which, which you know, leaves some good time for like a blend of uh, traditional PowerPoint like lecture, but then also, OK, break into small groups. Now let's let's do this activity, um, which students seem to, to, to really enjoy instead of sitting looking at a PowerPoint for a while for all, all of class. But yeah. 
So I'm looking at the time and I'm seeing that we have about 30 seconds left. Uh, I'd just like to remind everybody to check out the uh, in that, that chat stream there, the, the emails for uh, Professor Carr, for Professor Landsman and myself. Uh, I think on behalf of all of us, we're super excited uh, that you took time to, uh, to join us today. We really do hope you will choose Carlton and that we will see you in September. And if there's anything we can do in helping you make a, a, a decision, uh, let us know. So thanks. Have a great day. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.